compared to the nature, he wants to be small to make the nature bigger. Cliffs become huge. When you see a normal cliff, you see, yeah. But when you see a little guy like him flying over him, like, say, wow. He's like an animal, you know, respecting his environment and living with it and skiing with it without uh, hurting any little detail. Huh? He, he's really an animal, in fact. He's got this mystique to him that is just kind of part of who Candide is. There's very few ways to learn about Candide. It's just this, he just kind of he speaks through the mountains and he speaks through his riding and through his achievements and, and the, the rest is left up to the imagination.
Candide, bah, c'est toute une histoire. Que ce soit à l'école ou en ski ou n'importe où, il était toujours en ébullition. Il était juste jumping everywhere and doing front flip everywhere and back flip. Never stop, actually. Il dévalait les escaliers, il tombait du lit superposé. Il y avait toujours une bosse. Hein. I remember Candy doing backflip from a picnic table in the school. I was like, wow, this guy is cool. Il voulait toucher à tout, il faisait du hockey à fond. Il revenait le sol qui, qui était presque allongé par terre, c'était quand libre. Le sol complètement trempé et épuisé, épuisé c'était Candy. On reconnaissait euh, parmi les autres. Ouais. Alors quand il a commencé à skier la première fois, il avait deux ans, juste mis sur des patinettes et glissé euh, hop, sur des petites bosses. Quand il était petit, Raymond euh, emmenait son fils. Je le voyais avec une petite caméra à l'époque, je ne sais plus si c'était une Fuji. Chaque fin de saison, j'essayais de le filmer pour voir un peu les progrès. Et c'était euh, assez amusant de revoir tout ça. Candy started doing muggles and went pretty good at it. On voyait qu'il était dans son élément euh, très rapidement. Il a fait des compétitions, il était inscrit dans la section ski acrobatique. Le slalom, tout ça, ça n'a jamais été son, son truc. C'était vraiment le. le... Le, le plus gros espoir français que je veux dire par là, c'est qu'il a un talent, mais c'était incroyable. Quoi. Il gagnait tout, c'était vraiment il avait un ski que personne n'avait. We had uh, our idol, his name uh, is Edgar Ropiron. He was Olympic gold medalist in Albertville in 1992. You know, he's from La Cruzelle, which is pretty much a breeding ground for freestyle and bump skiers back in the day. Kant was always so proud to see Edgar. One day, uh, he came to the sports club. He started freestyle and he came with us and uh, we'll skate together. Bah, quand je regardais Edgar Copiron, quoi. Ça m'a donné l'idée quoi. Puis j'ai essayé, ça marche. He had, you know, like a wide view of the mountain. For him to make a turn here, it's because he wanted to make a jump of the, you know, like 300 meters further. Il jamais derrière le l'entraîneur, il se mettait toujours à la fin du groupe et euh, dès que l'entraîneur ne le voyait pas, il a sauté une bosse, il revenait euh, discrètement et il a toujours fait ça. He was uh, throwing backflips and uh, everybody was stoked by this young guy able to do tricks like that. Edgar, he was sort of the, the coach and the mentor for Candid and then there was another lovely lady Raphael Mono who was also a world champion bump skier. Candide, il était un peu euh, extraterrestre pour moi parce que déjà tout petit, il faisait du freestyle euh, comme personne d'autre. So he was skiing well in the moguls but in the air. Well, you could really see uh, that he was above everybody. Ce qui était extraordinaire, c'est qu'il avait beaucoup d'imagination. Et je pense que toute chose qui est créée euh, commence par l'imagination. Where Candide was uh, skiing at the beginning, uh, it was right in front of his house, in a place called Balm. The Balm is, I think, pretty much the reason, one of the biggest reasons of the, of the way that Candide rides. Every morning he opened uh, the window, he was just facing Balm and, and I'm sure he was looking what, what cliff, what air, what rocks he could jump and, and what kind of trick he could do on each one of them. Balm is 
it's the, the best place, <laughs> the best ski place. It's like a big open field with lots of kicker possibilities. It offers you from rollers to, to steep stuff to cliffs. A lot of guys that are from there, you can tell that the terrain definitely dictates how they ride. Balm, it's a part of Candide, you know. It's pretty much the Bible for the Lac Lusa guy, especially for Candide. In the light of the sun is smiling at the clouds, waking up for ourselves and giving us a chance to remind everyone the water in your eyes ought to try any time. My best to see like the first in the light of the sun is smiling at the clouds, waking up for ourselves and giving us a chance to remind everyone the water in your eyes ought to try anytime. My best to see like the first in the light of the sun is smiling at the clouds waking up for ourselves and giving us a chance to remind everyone the water in your eyes I'll try anytime my best to see like the first in the light of the sun is smiling Balm was perfect for a, for a kid like him because he wanted to push and to go further, always. He had such a different style and I don't know where it comes from but maybe from the snowboarder, he was, he was skiing a lot with snowboarders. He took a bit of his uh, mogul background and like kind of loosened it up with a bit more of this new freestyle attitude that the snowboarders kind of gave us. I remember that time back in 98, 99 and the skiers, they were looking at the snowboarders a lot because that was like the big bang they wanted something new the snowboarders were uh, definitely uh, like grabbing their boards and and doing kind of tricks that you know as a skier we really were like wow this is amazing and we wanted to try to kind of copy them in some way but bring it to our, to our own our own way I think that was uh, back in the days when the summer camps were on in Diable Ray and stuff and Candide was the only skier in that whole crew. I think there was no other guy that was hitting the stuff on skis. I remember him just this little nice guy that would just follow all the snowboarders and try the same stuff, you know. It's still ski. Okay, so you have to, you have to turn 
the snowboard tricks into the ski way uh, because the grabs are different, all those kind of tricks are different. He just adapted everything we would do, you know, like he would do the same style of tricks and I remember I was always thinking like, fuck, this is, this is the good style of skiing, this is, this is the way I like it. He was yeah, really like slashing all of his turns and having definitely a different perspective than the, the traditional skiing that basically every skier had back then. He was the first skier to, uh, to make all his moves really cool. You know, some guys were trying, but I don't know if, uh, yeah, the inspiration was wrong. Maybe like drawn from uh, rollerblading or stuff like that. He just really had this e extra flair that I think was really important to the development of skiing and, and the freestyle component of where skiing has gotten today. Snowboard was a big influence for me too, but uh, it was not the same as Candid. Candid, uh, Candid was my example and Snowboarder was the example of Candid. Candid came onto the scene at the time when the new Canadian Air Force boys, J.P. Claire, J.F. Cousin, had just, you know, had just really blown the, the sport up. And, but they were a little older and Candid was this really young kid and he had he had everything those guys had, and, you know, and then some. He was not alone, but for us, he was the pioneer because he started so young to think his own way that he's the pioneer. <laughs> Chad's Gap is a 120 foot gap in between two mine tailings up in Little Cottonwood Canyon. It's just this massive gap. You have to build a huge in run to it, super high speed. I'd never even fantasized that something that big was possible. The day that Candide and Chad hit it, Chad hit the gap twice. First time he came up really short, second time he was just under. That was a huge thing and uh, coming up short, Regardless of the conditions, yeah, it's it's going to shake you and it's going to hurt, even in even in deep powder. So Chad was done for the day. Candy very politely came up to Chad and uh, in his broken English asked uh, if he could hit his gap. He gapped the whole valley. I mean, you know, we were talking about gaps. You know, it was like a road gap over a pass or somewhere. You know, but this totally brought up new dimensions. I remember he's, he comes back to the office, he's got this, this photo print, someone someone took a shot, and it was just a print he had, he didn't have a slide or anything of it. And I, it, But it was a straight air, and he's kind of tucked up like this, and I kind of pissed him off, because I go, what, Candid, why didn't you spin? He was pretty like, oh, damn, Jasper, I thought you'd be like, wow. I was like, well, dude, why didn't you spin? Because he was, he was like spinning everything. So he went back huh, the next year. He went out there and was just, you know, guinea pig in this thing and slammed into the wall three or four times. And then on his next attempt, he just went and greased the most beautiful and big D-Spin 720 that had ever been thrown down to date. I was blown away. I, I really never thought that anything more than a 360 was going to happen over Chad's Gap. I mean, I was speechless. It really was a pinnacle moment in skiing and, you know, I'm sure a pinnacle moment for Candide and for his career. And I think as a, as a filmer, it was one of the most impressive things I've ever seen. When you see something which is just hands down, balls out, gnarly, yet you respect it. Nothing he ever does is small, you know, and he's kind of at the end of the day and he's completely worn out. He gives 110% no matter what he's doing. It's very easy in life to emulate something you've seen before. It's very different if you're the person who's the creator, if you're the initiator, if you're that person who has actually uh, broken ground and, and broken the barriers to say what is possible and what is not possible. You need somebody to go first, and this is what makes it. The follower is easy, it's always easy to follow, you know? It's, it's amazing to watch him go big. 
it's amazing to see him do something that nobody's ever done before. And something it's big and super impressive, people love it. idea behind Super Park is to build these big massive features bring all the best riders and filmers and just have these these epic sessions that particular session was one where Candide just really started going for it and blowing people's minds just backed off from hitting it and stood on the sidelines and watched the sport progress once again. And then the crazy 8, 10, uh, 2 rail or <laughs> corks, whatever, 2 rail. The other skiers, they did not really understand what was going on. I think they have never seen anything like that. That was crazy. At that time, that was completely crazy. And it's still crazy today. just went bigger than everybody. And actually people wanted to hold their run to watch Candide before they did their run. That was their, their inspiration. Over the years, whenever you see these great Candide shots, it's always just this crazy vision. You can't even begin to fathom how he came up with it. And up top, Candide Tobex, a youngster from France. And the kid is on fire. Now let's see if he can do it today. Just off of a big win at another event in Mammoth earlier this year. Winds it up, looking good. There it is, that's oh. the D-Spin 900. Nobody's been sticking that like Candide has. Blind like that. 17 years old. Were you doing that when you were 17? 83, strong first place. He is the man, the myth, the legend from France, Candide Tovex. This little guy packs more firepower than potentially any other athlete at Superpipe today. He likes to go huge off this first jump. That's right, and he was doing it all through practice. What's he got? Look at the oh air! Oh my god! Oh, look at the amplitude oh. he's getting! He is redefining the sport as we know it! Oh, Mike, he's gonna have to pull the ripcord on this. He's going so high. Is he skiing or is he face jumping down? Oh, hang on, he's got it! He's got it, one more trick. Yeah! Look at that! Oh, Candito back! Winter X history in the making, skiing super pipe is here. Candito back with a 90. Look at that! Zero. Wow, it's one of the best scores I've ever seen. The 2003 X Games Super Pipe that Candide won, that was another time where Candide just came in and raised the bar way above the rest of the field. It was just another sport. It was not the same, same thing. All the buzz was 
you would not believe what Candide and CR are doing. They just blew it away. They were they were going so big out of the pipe, no one had ever seen it, and it was really it was a big pro progression for for not only skiing but I think half pipe in general. He won uh, every aspect of uh, his game: big air, slope style, and pipe. This guy could upset the mix right now. That's Candide Tovex. Today he hasn't quite been able to put down the perfect run. Let's see if he can do it on his final run right now. We start off with a series of rails and Candide, a master, looking like Fred Astaire, just doing some dance in there for you. Then we get into the jumps. Here's a setup jump, put together perfectly, and then a big tabletop coming up. Yeah, Candide looking smooth thus far. You see him crouching down, trying to maintain his speed. That's what went wrong for him last time. You've got to carry your speed, especially over jumps like that giant step up gap. Candide smooth so far. This is his second final run, so he's got to nail every feature just like that, sliding down the rail. Here comes the last chance kicker. He does it, switch 1080, all corked out, Candy Tovex. Here comes his score, mark our words, it's yeah. going to be better than ninth. Will it be enough to take the lead? It is! Ah! 95! Yeah. A 95 for Candy, one of the highest slope style scores we've seen in a long time. I think uh, Candide, he was like, he was not super into competitions, I guess. He was more into like just go out and ski, you know, and have fun. And uh, the Invitational, I think he just wanted to do something really big. The Invitational was uh, just crazy. It's like uh, all the top free skier in the world show up for uh, a two or three day session. And the biggest, bigger or step up, everything was completely double sized. Every rider was just waiting for that moment of the season. And as soon as we were just getting there, we were just like, wow, it's even bigger than last year. And that was just crazy. I mean, I was just coming into the game at that stage, and I was all of a sudden I was competing and skiing next to all these dudes I looked up to. The format of the competition is really interesting because, in fact, there is no competition. It was like the best event of the year. The feeling, the, the vibes, everything was perfect. That was his dream, to invite a lot of people, a lot of good skiers, a lot of friends, and just ski and shoot on his backyard, you know? He worked prior to the event in the whole shaping, the whole course design, everything. I can remember finishing a meal one night a couple of days before the Invitational started and I went out because I was good friends with one of the cat drivers and I went out just to see how they were going. Candy was still there, shovel in hand with his crew, you know, and I was like, wow, man. The work that they've done to shape every jump, it's just a huge amount of work. Water pipes were like <laughs> more than 10 meters high. Like the step ups were huge. Like you had, you, you needed so much speed to get into there. That was crazy. But that's why it was so uh, so impressive to people and so so in inspiring as well. Because because I don't think before that people even thought about going as big. We met so many big kickers. People were arriving. They were seeing the big Bertha. They were like, no way. The uh, the infamous big Bertha jump. That was pretty crazy. I remember going up the chairlift looking across as a jump, like, this is insane. How's anybody going to hit this? I got scared doing that fucking jump, for sure. I wasn't, I wasn't ready for it as well. 
like it was it was almost I think it was almost too big people got scared and even us when we were shipping the jump was so big you were like in in nowhere I'm gonna jump this and then you see Candid going on it and sending it you see, oh, like, wow. The Big Berta was really big this year and uh, nobody ride it until the end of the, the Invitational. He was feeling, uh, he was feeling confident, so he tried to ride it. I told him it was like way too big. You know, you get to a point where sometimes like the body can't handle like the size of the jump. The flat was like 44 meters long. I think like in the middle of the hair, we were more like 13 or 14 meters high. It was really hot, spring day. After every lap, it gets slower and slower. Candide was asking us uh, if he was having uh, enough speed. You know, if you don't hit the jump, uh, it's hard to say to the guy, yeah, you got the right speed. So after I think the third speed check he did, he, he did not have enough speed. And he just, uh, yeah, I can remember, he just, jumped and you can see it was short, too short, and then he just... But just the impact, I was, uh, was shocked. He <laughs> just crashed in front of me, I thought he was dead. That was serious for sure. We went down and we knew it was a serious uh, accident happening here. C'était une fracture de L1 qui était ce qu'on appelle une fracture expansive, c'est-à-dire que non seulement la partie en arrière de, de la vertèbre était cassée, mais la partie du corps de la vertèbre était cassée, ce qui rendait la fracture très instable. Et c'était même extraordinaire que qu'il n'ait pas eu de troubles neurologiques parce que la fracture était située en L1, c'est-à-dire juste en regard du cône de la moelle épinière et à quelques millimètres près, il aurait pu avoir eu des gros troubles neurologiques. Il a eu énormément, énormément de chance. La chirurgie consiste dans ces cas-là à faire ce qu'on appelle une arthrodèse, c'est-à-dire qu'on ponte la vertèbre qui est cassée pour venir se fixer au-dessus et au-dessous et on réduit sur la table, c'est-à-dire que en positionnant et en mettant les vis et les, et les tiges, on réduit la fracture pour redonner à la vertèbre une, une hauteur normale. Il était frustré qu'il ne pouvait pas faire rien. Il ne savait pas si il serait capable de retourner à skier et de faire ce qu'il faisait. Je pense que c'était la partie de sa vie. Le docteur a dit « Non, tu ne peux pas. Tu peux être capable de skier de nouveau un jour, mais jamais le niveau ou le niveau que tu avais. » Like before, you know that was really the last um, we saw Candide in competition, and and he you know disappeared for a while after that. He could not jump that much after his accident. That's why he went into the powder. He just been filming, and then he dro he dropped Candy Camera One. And every everyone in the world just like wow. Just five minutes of skiing is just like wow.
people loved it. I mean, it's it was really, really nice and something really new. Someone ran into my office and was like, you gotta check this out, Candide's back. And and I watched it and, and you know, was just completely blown away. Never talks, never do nothing, and then just, like he's skiing, talk for himself. You know, you could tell he still had it. And then in 2010, he started to get involved in some of these big mountain free ride competitions. And sure enough, he goes out and does the uh, Red Bull line catcher. Well, I think there's no like perfect background to do well at this kind of event like if you're stronger at skiing lines or if you're stronger at freestyle it really doesn't matter in the end it's just uh, the rider that's going to be able to combine it all in the best way possible. I think this is really good for the sport this is what uh, we need I think it's going to build this is really uh, stepping stepping up the game. It was pretty stressful that time uh, on the top of the mountain and uh, he did uh, the first run and he crashed and the second one was like, boom, Candid is back. <laughs> Fires lit up. People, people couldn't believe it. And here's Candide, and and now he's in into Big Mountain. I said, well, you should go ski in the World Tour, you know. <laughs> Red World Tour is um, six stops around the world. Uh, it's basically the competition of Big Mountain skiing and snowboarding. Before he came to the tour, we we all knew that he would uh, ride well. We we contacted him and and uh, just asked simple questions. Would that be interesting to your eyes? I remember people asking me, what do you think of Candy doing the world tour? And I was, um, yeah, I said it straight, like, yeah, I think uh, there's no way he can win the, the world tour the first year. It was sure that he's going to do some good place. Maybe not being the, the world champion, but uh, yeah, I know he's going to be on the podium. For sure. Well, I had doubts because, uh, you know, it's a totally different perspective. You know, all the risk, all the experience you need. 
and uh, and plus doing that in competitions when conditions are not always good, where you need to be like a super strong skier, I thought there, w there was no way he could adapt so quickly. And first stop in Chamonix, I remember like, wow. I saw his first line, I was blown away. Yeah, like it's funny how you you see people riding big mountain for years and you think it's you know, that's the standard, that's the way to ride a mountain. And then someone comes and, oh, you can ride it like that. After the, the first contest in Chamonix, I was, yeah, he's gonna win for sure. Some people would, was, were saying that he would be surprised by the environment, the steepness, the extreme side of Bec des Ross. The final, you know, uh, on the, being on the top of the Bec des Ross, like Candid and I were last. I remember him being, like shitting himself and being like always not trusting himself in a way. Candy uh, showed a, a new way to ride in uh, free riding, knowing he he is using the mountain as a, as a playground more than anybody else. From the freestyle park riding to the big mountain thing, that's like amazing to see. And when he won the free ride world tour, maybe no one has done that before. La raison pour laquelle il y est arrivé, c'est que avant tout, Candy c'est pas un freestyler, c'est pas un free rider, c'est un skieur. He's definitely one of the originator of this style of skiing. I mean, I, I believe many skiers can say thank you to him. It's amazing. You never know what's going to happen. Dropping. Oh, 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 no! <laughs> Crazy. Yeah. Really good day. I'm really happy. Our time is good. When I ride here with my friend, I'm so happy all the time. <laughs>
it's not about competitions and medals. Not about trying to do things better, but always in a different way. Skiing all comes down to creativity. There are no set rules. I look at it as a way out, a way to forget about everything else. Being out there keeps me grounded and reminds me how insignificant we really are and what life is all about. It's endless.
Sol de llet 